To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Please sit down. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor, all principal officers, my wonderful Bowie Knights. Like the Vice Chancellor said, the privilege of standing among you as the Pro Chancellor has given me a specific vision for you. My vision, mission for Bowen University is that the students will be the centerpiece of our policy thrust. Anything that will enhance the quality of your education, anything that will enhance the quality of your lifestyle, such things we will pursue doggedly. This is because we want to make Bowen one of those high standard universities. We want to make the graduates of Bowen highly competitive globally. We are not producing students for just Nigeria. We are producing students that we take their position in the global market. So if that is the case, we have to work hard, we have to cooperate, and we have to collaborate with other institutions around the world and I cannot think of a better person who has been doing this than the Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Two days ago, we were watching, where well, we were on Zoom on this Niger Bear project. I was transformed beyond this ethereal world to another planet. When this is completed by the grace of God, Bowen will become the center in the whole of Africa for space observation by the special grace of God. You will have people from all over the world coming here to observe the space from this project. You have students from all over the world coming here to study. And you can imagine how that will enhance your own curriculum. It will exp expand your own circle of friends and your horizon. So we bless the name of the Lord for these opportunities that are waiting for you. I don't have anything more to add to the speech or to the sermon that the chaplain has given this morning. But permit me to take just an aspect of it. And I want three of you to come out with your Bible. One from this angle, one from this angle, and one from this angle. The first to come out, come and stand with me. Bring your Bible, one from here, one from there, and one from there. The first to come is the winner. One, one. Anybody from here?
<laughs> okay, we've got it. Th okay, hey, just come. Mm -hmm. I won't send you back. Okay, the first person is going to open Romans 12, 1 to 2. The second person will open 1 Corinthians 6, 19. The third person will open 2 Corinthians 16. <laughs> okay, Romans 12, 1, Romans 12, 2. So that at least, so you stay here. Stay with him. So which one are you? Okay? No, Second Corinthians six, sixteen. Okay, which one are you opening? Yeah? First Corinthians nineteen. Okay. You know, the chaplain said many things, but there was one he emphasized, and he was saying, "Zip it, close your lap." It has to. Hmm? Eh? I didn't say chapter 19. I said chapter 6, verse 19. Verse 19. Okay. The chaplain is very, very correct. Very, very correct. And you must take this seriously. You know, it's not good to repeat, but it's good to repeat because repetition strengthens memory. And this is the time we should repeat and repeat this aspect of life to you. Because any mistake made at this stage follows one throughout life. That's why I'm taking, creating, I mean, getting uh, permission from him to re-emphasize, not just emphasize, re-emphasize what you have said. Permission granted? Thank you. Now, let's first read Romans 12, 1 and 2. What does the Bible say? I, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay. I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That is the King James's version. I beseech you, Paul was pleading with the Romans because as of then, immorality was part of the culture of the Romans. But for the Christians among the Romans, he was telling them, I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Nobody offers a dead sacrifice to any idol, not to talk of God. Your body is supposed to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And the Bible says it's your reasonable service. If you do not preserve your body as a teenager, as a young man, as a young woman, to be holy and acceptable unto God is a foolish service. Something that is reasonable is something, somebody who is reasonable is somebody who is wise. So when you lose what you are supposed to do, you become foolish. Foolish. Nobody accepts foolish service. Does anybody accept foolish service? It won't even be God. We cannot offer foolish service to God. So your reasonable service at this stage of your life is to present your bodies as living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. Why should it be so? Let's talk of it just physically, at the physical level. If you abuse your body, if you misuse your body, by the time you are 50, you are 60, you'll be walking beggar, beggar, 
beg, beg. Do you understand what I'm saying? You'll be wobbling because you have abused your body. This boy has gone this way with you. You have gone that way with that boy. The boy himself has become a butterfly, going from one person to the other. And so you have lost the firmness of your body. You cannot stand properly, and not just physically. You know all the diseases going around these days, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, et cetera, et cetera. Gonorrhea, thank you for reminding me. All those ones, you will pick somewhere along the line. The most important aspect of it that I want to stress, you know, sex is spiritual. Listen to this. Don't say, ha, huh. your chaplain has just told you that God created it for procreation. Now, when you go about there are so many people today who are involved in a ritual killing, ritual, um, I mean, occultic practices, occultic practices. I know of people who wanted to become National Assembly people, who wanted to become a House of Representative people, uh, who wanted to get big positions in life. According to what they say, they bathe with blood. They use incant incantation. They do all these charms. They wear them. They swallow them. Now, you, a young girl, a young lady, a young man, who cannot be reasonable in his service to God. Let me now tell you what happens. Those men, part of their ritual desire is to look for girls who are still very chaste. Girls who have not been sleeping with anybody. And when they get at you and you fall a prey, Part of that occultic something gets into your body. And that's why I say sex is spiritual. It's not just uh, that is all, I've taken my bath. No, no, no. Part of it is already transmitted to you. And when it is transmitted, now you young men, who cannot zip it, who cannot hold yourself, who have forgotten that you are supposed to present your bodies holy and acceptable unto God. You see this cheap girl, you talk, you smile. You are foolish. Before you know it, you are having something with her. That one that she took from that big man has come on you too. So, where is your holiness? What are you living for? And you now transmit it when you are finally married to your wife. And you know the type of children that will come from such occultic connection. I don't want to say more. So what are you supposed to do? Verse 2, Romans 12. Not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by. Speak loud. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect to you. Okay, thank you. Do not be conformed to this world. Uh, all the guys do it. All the boys do it. I mean, that's the in thing. It's not the in thing. As it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be. It's not the in thing. Once upon a time, we were girls. 
we were in university. They were saying the same thing, it's the end thing. But because we went through the girls' auxiliary in our churches, of GA, of GA, of GA, we were taught purity, purity, purity. And so we focused on what they taught us because our parents dragged our ears and told us that you cannot do anything but what the tradition of the family is. They dragged our ears. So we kept to the rules in the Bible. I'm telling you, that is the only way you can hold your head high among the boys, you girls. The moment they get rid of you, they will tell their friends, you will become the, I mean, the, I mean, the, the, the joke, the joke of the time. As they are passing and you are passing them by them, they look at each other. <laughs> She's mine. I mean, but I, I can give her to you. So they will not treat you like football. They pass you from one hand to the other. You become football. Come on. That's not God's will for you. God's will for you is that you should live and do what? Prosper. Prosper as the chaplain said. Now, you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Don't fall a victim to any man. If any, if any young man says you are pretty, tell him I know. Tell him I know. What did I say? If any young man says you are beautiful, say I know. If any young man tells you you are pretty, say I know. Yes, you know, because everything God created is beautiful, isn't it? You are beautiful, but your purity is the greatest beauty of your life. And that is why, and that is why the book of Proverbs that the chaplain referred to says the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Because you did not abuse your body, you did uh, misuse your body, your husband will trust you. Even when you are on a, a business trip, he will say, ah, the thing she, she, she didn't do when she was a, a teenager, a young girl. She won't do it now, now that, she, that she's married to me. That is where the trust is. That is why you have to keep yourself. Because if your husband cannot trust you, then there's a problem for your marriage. Are you following me, ladies? Are you following me? Can you hear me there? <laughs> and you, young men, remember you have sisters. You have sisters. Young men, remember you have sisters. Young men, Remember you have sisters, not so. What does the Bible say? Do unto others. Chorus it with me now. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. So anytime you just want to take a girl and take her for a ride, just know somewhere somebody is going to do the same to your sister. And I know and I know that you won't want them to do that to your sister. Not so. Hello? So please, don't do it to them. And then finally, why do you need to keep your body holy and acceptable unto God? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Who is reading that? You surely know that your body... You surely know that your body is a temple where the Holy Spirit lives. The Spirit is in you and is a gift from God. 
you are no longer your you, you are no longer your own. Thank you. Your body is the temple of God. Here we are. This is our temple here, isn't it? Hello? This is where we worship God, right? When you came in here this morning, did you see anything dirty there? Hello? This is our own temple where we worship here. Did you see anything dirty here this morning? No, thank you. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Very good. Cleanliness is next to godliness. If you want Christ to live in you and you are the temple of God, you have to keep your body clean. What did I say? You have to keep your body clean. Is your body clean? Have you not uh, contaminated it with um, what do they call it? Um, drugs? Drugs, hard drugs, contraceptives, which other one? Alcohol, smoking, eh? cocaine, what else? marijuana, and so on and so forth. Ask yourself this morning whether Christ can dwell in your body because of all those things that you have done. And like I said earlier on, if you've been allowing them to push you this way, that way, that way, and you have become football to boys, and if you boys have become a um, butterfly, flying from one uh, uh, flower to the other, today you must stop it. So that the Holy Spirit can renew you and make you clean. Finally. For, um, 2 Corinthians 2, 16. Uh, 6, 16. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Okay. So, God wants to live in your body. You cannot be unequally yoked with others. And you can't say, eh, I know he's a... Uh, it's an allergy, but he says he loves me. And he says uh, he will allow me to be going uh, to my church. It's a lie. I have seen so many of them. He says uh, uh, his father is the, uh, is the imam, but his father is Libra. So when I marry him, uh, it will be okay. And you know, they give gifts. They know how to lavish gifts that he will allow you to go to church. It's a lie. It's all sugar-coated mouth. Even when you go, your children will not go. You cannot be unequally yoked with them. That is what the Bible is saying. Stand firm on the word of God because I'm the Lord, I change not. What God has said in the beginning, is what he's repeating in the book of Revelation. Remember all that the chaplain has said today and just wrap it up with all I have said. God bless you.